work. So, and thank everyone for joining us for module two of our clinical trial odyssey, What Could Go Wrong, ICH, our two investigative sites and risk assessment. Today, our speakers will be Bill Collins, Executive Director, Global Operations and Management at Cineos Health, and Mike Walega, Executive Director, Monitoring and Data Flow Optimization for Covance. Immediately following the webinar, you'll be prompted to complete a survey in order to successfully receive your contact hour credit. Uh, you logged into WebEx as an individual, remain present for the webinar in its entirety and, and complete the post-webinar survey. If these three requirements are met, you will receive a contact hour certificate via email within 30 days. There is no contact hour credit offered for listening to the recording of this presentation. If you have any questions, use the Q&A feature you can at the top right of your WebEx screen, it's a little a square with a question mark in it to ask questions of the presenters. Uh, this bar will continue for approximately 30 minutes. They use 60, but this one is going to be a shorter version. And I'll uh, now turn it over to Jill Collins and Mike Balega. Thank you very much, and welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining uh, this webinar today. This is part two in a four-part series called The Clinical Trial Odyssey. It's a collaboration of SERS and ACRO's CRO Forum. My name is Jill Collins. I'm an Executive Director in Global Operations Management at Cineos Health. I've been in the industry for over 20 years in roles in clinical operations such as a CRA, a clinical lead, and also in clinical operations quality management. I've been leading Cineos Health's response to ICH E6R2 and risk-based monitoring approach for over five years. Mike, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you. Hello, everyone. Mike Waliga at Clance. I'm responsible for central monitoring operations and also the development of the tools that we use to support risk-based monitoring. I've had experience, unlike Jill, mine has been all on the back end of, of clinical files, data, statistics, and the like. Uh, I'm very happy to be here, very much looking forward to engaging with you, and uh, let's begin. Thank you, Mike. Um, I also want to thank Anina. If you could back one slide, Anina. <laughs> Thanks so much, uh, Anina from ACRO, for all your support uh, with the session and also helping us with the slides. Um, last week, we kicked the series off with an overview and an assessment of the impact of ICAG 6 r 2 on sites and sponsors. Um, that session was really interesting, and the polling revealed that the audience felt that learned more about the important impacts of the addendum, most substantial changes to the guidance in the area of quality management and the associated risk assessment processes. So today we'll focus on ICHE 6 r 2 particularly on risk assessment and investigative sites. As we mentioned earlier, there will be time for questions at the end of the session, and if you could please use that question and answer feature that's located in the upper right uh, portion of your screen. Um, and we could proceed. Let's go wrong, right? Um, We'll start with that question. We know that experienced sites have encountered trials that have gone poorly for various reasons. So today, we'll solicit feedback from you about the trial challenges and delays that you've experienced. We'll aim to help you think differently about risk-based monitoring and present different perspectives on ICAG 6R2, explore the implementation of a risk-based approach and how key risks are identified. And we'll also examine the engagements that, that between sponsors and CROs during protocol and clinical trial risk assessment. Slide, please. Management and protocol risk assessment. What is it and what is it not, right? The section of ICHE 6R2 that we're discussing today is Section 5 which is the sponsor section on quality management. It take a moment to start the discussion about talking about what it's not. It can set a base level for us. Quality management and protocol risk assessment is not an assessment of site 
performance and it's not intended to add complexity to trial operations. And it's not a standardized process, but CHE 6R2 provides us a beneficial structure and framework for more standardization. So let's talk about what it actually is. It's specific to the sponsor's responsibilities, outlines the expectations for quality management system, H is guiding sponsors and their delegates as CROs to have a systematic methodology in place to focus on trial activities essential to ensuring human subject protection and reliability of the trial results. It starts with the design of an efficient protocol and the tools and procedures for data collection. That emphasizes that the methods used to assure and control the quality of the trial should be proportionate to the risks inherent in the trial and the importance of the information collected. I see is urging sponsors to ensure that all aspects of the trial are operationally feasible and avoid unnecessary complexity in procedures and data collection. But what could go wrong? What changes actually occur? If you can next slide, we'll be able to open the polling. And a polling question we would like to learn from you about your experiences as investigative sites. You've all experienced trial challenges. So if you just take a minute and answer this question, which one of the following is a key contributor to trial conduct challenges for sites? So a minute to go ahead and select your answer. And I'll go ahead and talk a little bit more about Section 5.0. includes seven steps and a thorough risk management process for the life cycle of the study. It includes the identif identification of critical data and processes, ideally during the protocol development period, and also risk assessment, identification, being evaluation and control measures, as well as the communication, periodic review, and reporting of risk. See how we're doing with the poll. Ability to it. Oh, they, this is they've answered the questions, and you'll see the results in just a minute or just okay. a second. Oh, great. great. So, a minute for the poll results to come up, and we're starting to see those results. If we're looking at it, we can see that one of the common responses here is the protocol, complex protocol procedures, as one of the challenges for sites. The next one is the difficult inclusion and exclusion criteria. And uh, coming in last is the overestimated recruitment rate expectations. What are some potential benefits of quality management for investigative sites that, as you've just noted, will like diminish with on a proactive reduction of the complexity of their protocols? It should make it easier to administer the studies. They should be more operationally feasible and scientifically sound. With the reduction of challenging inclusion and exclusion criteria, it will also allow you to make more appropriate <clears throat> enrollment um, activities and in, improve that enrollment rate expectations for trial success. As we deeper into the specifics of the risk assessment process, we'll be looking for feedback from you. I'm over to my colleague, Mike Willis, now. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, I guess it's not surprising the response to the poll in that since so many more complex protocols that are being proposed by sponsors to address complex disease states. And it's, it's inherent that within that, the more complex the protocol, the more challenging it is to identify the, the right patient populations that will meet, meet the specific needs desires of, of the sponsor to address that, that specific disease state. 
And so what we'd like to do is sort of carry forward the ideas that you may have heard in the first webinar last week around an example scenario in quality risk management. Now, if you think about this, for those of you that are located in a hospital setting, the identification and management of risks to patients who enter your facility is paramount. You know, the concerns about potential risks to patients, for example, from like MRSA or nosocomial pneumonia or other highly contagious diseases. Your institutions have steps and procedures to identify, evaluate, and control these risks to patients as much as possible. And on some frequency basis, you evaluate the potential exposure of patients to these diseases based on information you collect so you can, be better, pro so you can better proactively manage those risks that may occur in the future. Well, the thought process you can apply to, to clinical trials, and this is where ICHE6R comes into play, and specifically 5.0.1, uh, the critical data and process identification, and then 5.0.2, risk identification. How to identify, evaluate, and control risks to better ensure successful conduct of a clinical trial. It follows a similar process that you might go through in a applying risks to patients at your, at your site. So first and second steps, this is where we think you in, in your roles can potentially participate and collaborate and take steps within your organizations and provide valuable information and feedback to sponsors. While the data that's derived from individuals participating in trials is what's consistent across all sites, how that data is generated to generate that data with the same level of quality within and between individuals that participate in a trial, and then between sites, that is crucial to the ability to interpret the results in a consistent manner that meets regulatory requirements. So, for example, on the right-hand side, what could go wrong? Simple as changing raters, either with a subject or between subjects. Rater instructions that are open to subjective interpretation can result in the rejection of a trial's data due to excessive variability in the data. Simple as your staff providing an out-of-sequence scale to a patient to complete. It doesn't take much to potentially devalue or invalidate the data that is generated at a site or at multiple sites. The purpose of the activities that are listed here on this slide, hand side specifically, is to understand the risks inherent in successfully conducting a clinical trial able to characterize and prioritize those risks, and then devise mitigation strategies and or controls to help minimize their impact. Please, Anina. And second polling question. Well, given some of the conversation we've just had about from the pre-slide, and specifically around interaction with sites, you know, as part of the initial risk assessment process. If we agree that the protocol is really the first place to help us understand where the risks are because they are inherently complex now compared to years past, in what way do you think sites can provide feedback, positive feedback on potential trial challenges? You can, one of A, B, C, or D, provide protocol risk assessment feedback on site information forms, investigator meeting, sponsor advocacy group meetings, Website qualification visits by monitors. So, your choice, please. Your choices consider experiences you may have already had with sponsors. I know many who have a significant amount of experience in working with sponsors, some may have less experience. The ease with which you could participate in a trial and, or in, in this process to make this effective not only for you, but for the patient that volunteer for these trials and for the sponsors. You know, when the, to, uh, to show the results. Second. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Interestingly, there, there, there is no real answer here because this, this is ground thinking, how we're trying to address the needs of the sponsors, but also to think about how you can provide constructive and valuable feedback and help shape 
the protocol in and of itself. We know that there are opportunities to do that, but how do we make this a more effective and efficient manner of all trials? You know, one of the goals of risk-based monitoring is to institute steps that allow for the evaluation of clinical trial protocols as they are developed. And that's a key point to make. It's, it's one of the ways we can impart that consistency, that ability to remove subjectivity and to, to make it easier for patients who participate, those who participate, to be successful in their endeavors. So again, ways that you can participate with the sponsors or sponsors in protocol development, specifically focusing on how you can ensure it fits for, fits for purpose and identify ways that complexity can be minimized. So go please, Amina. You know. how to provide feedback to sponsors and their partners on the challenges that you might see during the conduct of a trial, how to then hear about the risk assessment outcomes. What information get to you? What type of format does it take? Who provides that information? How would you like to receive this information? Would you think this information is valuable for you in helping you to better manage your clinical trials? During the investigative meeting, when you're provided training on the protocol, a review of the processes and procedures that are critical to patient well-being, data that may be used to support marketing applications, or is a site initiation visit. We're going to gain deeper understanding of the monitoring strategy that will be implemented and discussed with you. As the trial progresses, ongoing risks communicated to you, their mitigations so you may need to take to manage your, your trials and your patients differently, but still meet the, the, the compliance requirements within the protocol as well as regulatory com compliance. And so the work to do here. So if we go to the next poll, poll, and this is going to be a bit more of a, an interesting one. Uh, this is a word map. It's an interactive poll that I ask you to participate in. Uh, and it's going to require you to use your mobile devices. Uh, I'd like to ask you to do, and there are the instructions here. Uh, you can do this if you don't have a, a mobile device handy, if you have your computer, laptop, or head. You can respond to pollev.com backslash risk assessment, or in text the word risk assessment, one word, to the number 22333, and it will give a response saying you, you're welcome to join uh, this webinar. What we'd like to do is to consider the following two or three word phrase, where or how or when do you believe you can effectively contribute to the risk assessment discussion? Use more than one word, like the word risk assessment, or like we have here, the example during monitoring, you need to put either a hyphen or an underscore between the words. So we'll give you a minutes, and this is the interactive, and so as your responses appear, or you, I should say, as you enter your responses, they will appear here on the screen with the responses gathering up as larger text and uh, fewer, fewer responses showing up as smaller text. Excellent. Quite Excellent. Great. Site visits. Good. Things. Site visits. Questionnaire. Site visit. Protocol. Very good. Good. Excellent. But one of, the, one of the reasons we wanted to do this kind of poll, because it's very hard to gather your feedback in an additional poll like, we have, like we've done for the first and second polling questions. We thought it would be a great idea to gather specifically from you, each of you, your, your individual thoughts on how you could contribute to this discussion. And it's, it's really great to see the responses that we're getting 
one of one of the things that we think is important, uh, not only to get your individual feedback, but to also get this this the attendees' feedback in in a group manner. And so we can see th see things. For example, the questionnaire came up as a very strong and consistent uh, response by many of you. That protocol review is is a consistent response by many of you. Site visits is a consistent response by many of you. Now, so this is going to help us to better think about how we in our work in, within Acro, but also in collaboration with our, our sponsors through Transcelerate, can better collaborate on ways to evaluate risk and, and to bring you and, and your teams in, into this conversation. Now, there are many questions we need to consider and steps we need to consider as we go forward with this. You know, how, could, how can we in our support this? How can SCRS support site feedback on this? How, how can site interactions during protocol development improve the feasibility of the protocol and reduce the need for protocol amendments? Clearly an important aspect of this because that just adds more complexity and challenges to the ability to conduct a protocol. And so what we, what we will do will be to take this information here, bring it back for certainly for internal discussions within the ACRO organization, but also hopefully be able to share this with, with wider groups such as Transcelerate. So I thank you for your participation in, the, in this poll. And with that, this concludes the webinar. I thank you, and Jill and I would like to thank you very much and appreciate your attending and your, your participation. We'd like to urge you to attend the third and fourth webinar in this series. Uh, the third one is scheduled for April 5th on centralized monitoring, and the last one is scheduled April 12th on operationalizing change and site management. Right now, is open up the webinar for your questions, and to remind you to please use the Q&A feature on the top right-hand side uh, if you'd like to ask a question. Again, thank you for your attendance and participation. Mike JDRS, none have come in through the chat function to the host. So if um, when you're coming into you, we'll give them an, another few seconds. If no questions come in, uh, we'll I'll come in our. First one, does that do you, do you all see that one that's coming in the Q&A window? It's for me. Uh, one has asked if there's a way to view, to view the recording of session one. Um, yeah, after each presentation, we will send out a link to the recording. Uh, registered, if you registered after that first one uh, aired, then, uh, uh, then you wouldn't get that notification. But if you send me an email, uh, michael.j at myscrs.org, I'll give you a link to that. And some about us, uh, the, the CEU, yes, I'll, I'll pass those out. This one was um, scheduled to be short, but I'll... I'll pass out the CEUs to everyone um, in the next few days, but usually I get them out about what about a week or so. Um, and then said thank you. So you're welcome. And with that, uh, everyone, thanks for your presentation today. Look forward to the next module of the series. So if any, please, uh, please complete the webinar survey and the evaluation that will follow this webinar as we close out. Of More good technology business and clinical practices for our top tier webinars and other mini series uh, you can see the SRS Insight Journal that is published quarterly for members in the members section of our website myscrs.org if you're not please go to our join page and look at the different options for membership into the Society for Clinical Research sites looking forward to seeing you all at the EUAP and Global Summits this year the only conference series entirely focused on the needs of clinical research sites and we appreciate everyone's participation in today's program Program. We look forward to having you join us for more webinars in the coming year. And today's session has been recorded. And as I mentioned before, we will send that link out to you within the next 24 hours. And we look forward to your feedback. And thanks again for joining us. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.